from New York City, we present Gene Hirschholt in a new Dr. Christian story called The Neediest Case. Presented for your enjoyment by the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Every man wants to keep his hair and keep it good looking. Unfortunately, overheated rooms, too much soap and water, all help to rob the hair of the protective oils that nature provided to keep it manageable and handsome. It grows dry, brittle. Your scalp sheds loose dandruff scales. Now don't let dry scalp threaten the good looks of your hair. Start now to combat this condition with Vaseline hair tonic. Every week before shampooing, give your scalp a thorough massage with Vaseline hair tonic. This stimulates the circulation and helps to supplement the natural scalp oils, which soap and water tend to remove. Then every morning, use a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic to dress your hair. It gives a soft, natural look and helps to counteract dryness. In fact, it's one tonic that simply cannot dry the hair. For Vaseline hair tonic contains no drying ingredients. It's economical, too. Dousing is unnecessary. Just a few drops on the hair each morning do the trick. Buy a bottle tomorrow. Vaseline hair tonic comes in convenient shaker top bottles at 40 and 70 cents. Well, the stage is all set here in the Columbia Playhouse in New York for Gene Hersholt, playing tonight in the Dr. Christian drama, The Neediest Case. As the curtain rises, we find him traveling along the icy road where telephone company troubleshooters are repairing wires blown down by the storm. Hello there, Doc. Oh, hello, Terry. Hi, Doc. Well, you fellas have got your work cut out for you today, all right. And far into the night. <laughs> <laughs> Regular doctor's hours, eh? I'll say. <laughs> oh, by the way, I noticed just now there's a wire down over on Willow Road. On Willow Road, huh? Yeah, right in front of Miss... Oh, what's her name? Uh, you know, the old lady who lives in that very shabby old brown house. Oh, uh, Miss uh, Fenner. Ivy Fenner, yeah. that's it. I didn't know whether she'd reported it or not. Why, no. No, she has no telephone. That's probably why. Well, she may not even have seen it. I don't know how she could have missed it. It's hanging right across her front gate. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a bad place for a while. Well, we'll go over and attend to it just as soon as we finish up here. Thanks for letting us know, Doc. Uh, in the meantime, I'll drop by there and mention it to her, just so she won't by any chance walk into it. Can you get by our truck all right there, Doc? Sure. Swing out a little more to your left. Watch it, Doc. All right, now you're clear. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. See you Dr. Christian. Who? Paul Christian. Oh. Oh, just a minute now. <laughs> I keep my door locked on account of all these solicitors and folks who come around trying to sell things. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'm not working my way through college. Huh? What? <laughs> oh, I just stopped by to tell you that there's a wire down in front of your house. Oh, is yeah. there? Yeah, there were pair men would be around to fix it shortly. But I wanted to warn you in case you were going out to look out for it. Uh, it's not likely I'd be going out in weather like this. Mm, this pretty slippery underfoot. Especially when you don't own so much as a pair of creepers. Well, if there's nothing to take you out, you're certainly much better off right by your own fire. <laughs> fire? What made you think I had a fire? Why? Uh... You didn't see any smoke coming out of my chimney, did you? Miss Fennel. Oh, I... it's all right. I'm used to it. You mean to say you're living in an unheated house? Oh, it ain't bad. With a the thermometer down around zero? Oh, I'm in bed most of the time anyway. Well, my dear woman... I'd I... be there now if I hadn't had to get up and answer the door. You're sick? No. Well, suppose I come in and have a look at you. No, no, I don't need a doctor. Here, let me shut the door and keep some of this wind out. I tell you, I don't need a doctor. Oh, Lord, it's cold in here. Cold than outside. I... I can't afford a doctor. Never you mind about that. You just get back into bed now. No, no, I'm not sick. Hey, away. Let me help you. <laughs> it's just weakness. There. <sighs> now, cover yourself up. Yeah. Are these all the blankets you've got? Yes. Oh, your hands and feet are like ice. 
You haven't a hot water bottle in the house, have you? No, no. Well, you stay there while I make a fire on the stove. No, no, you can't. Can't I? Oh, well, you don't know what a good fire bill I am. I can beat any boy scout in River Sand with one hand tied behind me. <laughs> now, where do you keep your wood? There ain't any. No wood? Not a stick. Nor any coal? No. Well, let's see what we can find to burn. What about this kitchen chair? Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's not a family heirloom, is it? No, but... I'll see that you get an order to take its place. <laughs> You've got to have some heat in this house right away. I don't know if the stove grows or not. So long since I've had it like it. Well, what do you use for cooking? Well, I ain't done any cooking to speak of. Not since they turned the gas off. You mean to say that... Oh, it's all right. I just couldn't pay my bill. Did you explain to the company? No. Well, I will. I'll go to Charlie Gorham and tell him. I'll tell the other good folks in River Sand, too, what's going on here right under the very noses. And believe me, I'm... Is that the Wooden Coal Company? Oh, is that you, Benny? This is Dr. Christian. Hey, listen, Benny. I want you to do something for me. I want you to donate a half a quart of wood to an old woman who is freezing to death. No. Oh, I'm not joking. She is. Where? Right here on River's End. Miss Fenner. Miss Ivy Fenner. Oh, on, on, on Willow Road. You know her? Well... She's in a bad way. Absolutely no heat in the house and not a cent of money, too. What? Well, of course, a whole cord would be just twice as welcome as half a cord. Thank you, Benny. I know I could count on you. I'll tell you the whole story when I see you. But uh, I haven't time now. I've, I've got some other people to call up. I kept you waiting, Dr. Christian. That's all right. I was up in the attic hunting for some old foot warmers the family used to have. Foot warmers? Mm -hmm. I'm putting on a big sleigh ride tonight for a crowd of youngsters. You know, taking advantage of the snow and a holiday weekend. So, that's why the pile of blankets here on the front hole? Mm hmm. <laughs> Think we'll keep warm? Why, what's the matter? Oh, I thought when I saw them that perhaps you'd heard and cut them ready for me. Heard? Heard what? I happen on a most pitiful case today, Rita. The sort of thing you just wouldn't believe could exist in a place like River's End. Really? Tell me. You know Miss Fennel? The old witch? Oh, she's not a witch. She's a poor old woman. Why, we, we always used to think so as children. We were scared to death to go near her house for fear she'd grab us and eat us. <laughs> Heaven knows she's hungry enough to do something desperate. What? What do you mean? She's starving, Rita. That poor old creature is literally starving. Dr. Christian. That is no. She's had no heat in that house of hers all winter. It's like a tomb. Oh, how awful. Well, she has no warm clothes, and her blankets are so worn and so thin that she can see right through. Is she as poor as all that? She's absolutely penniless. But why didn't she let somebody know? Too proud, I guess. Proud? That snivelling old whining... Oh, Rita. Well... I'm surprised at you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> it's the old witch complex, I guess, but I just can't bear that old woman. If you'd seen her, I saw her th as I saw her this morning, you could feel nothing but pity in your heart for her. Perhaps. To me, there's nothing quite so sad as old age that's destitute and friendless. Well, it's her own fault she has no friends. Hmm, evidently, I've come to the wrong place. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Rita. Oh, Dr. Christian, forgive me. I, I shouldn't have said what I did. I thought you'd be the first to offer aid and sympathy. Well, I'll be glad to do anything I can, of course. What is it you want? Donations. Food? 
Oh, Jim Pearson has promised to send me a supply of grocery for all from the store. Mm -hmm. It's clothing I'm after from the ladies. All right. Have you a list? <laughs> In my head. <laughs> well, tell me and I'll write it down. Blankets. Mm -hmm. Blankets. A hot water bottle. You know, every family has an extra one. Mm -hmm. That leaks. But all right, what else? Uh, let's see. Flannel nightgowns. Mm -hmm. A warm wrapper. Wrapper. Bed socks. Mm -hmm. It's me, and I've brought a very charming young lady with me. Huh? I don't want a nurse. I won't have a nurse. Oh, I'm not a nurse, Miss Fenner. Oh. I'm Rita Wells. The lady who's responsible for the blankets and the other nice things. Oh. Wells, eh? <laughs> yes, I used to live right near here, over on Sycamore Road when I was a little girl. Don't you remember? Uh, there were so many brats screeching around the neighborhood, breaking windows and all. I couldn't keep track of them. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What you got there? A jar of homemade chicken soup that I thought you might like. Chicken soup, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never been very partial to chicken soup. Oh, but wait till you taste this. It's hyper, super, extra good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see it. Mm, all right. Here it is. Uh, what's them little black things floating through it? Oh, that's just seasoning. Looks like pin feathers to me. Oh, Miss Fanner. <laughs> well, set it down somewhere if I... If you like eating any of it later on, I will, but I don't know. You eat too. You should eat, you know. You ought to get your strength back. <laughs> I'm past being hungry. Now, if you'd let me heat it up for you and fix some crackers with it, it would What do you need is a nurse. I don't want a nurse. There's the same you ought to have one. No. It's all wrong you're being here all alone. I'm used to it. Yes, I know. I don't want any strange woman living in my house snooping around. Oh, she wouldn't snoop. I know what nurses are like, always poking in bureau drawers and peeking in closets and asking questions that's none of their business. I won't have one, I tell you. Oh, but you'd be so much more comfortable. I'm all right. Well, if you don't want anyone around here on full-time duty, well... How about getting the district nurse to come in once a day just to give you good back up and make your bed and... My bed don't need making. I'm in it all the time anyway. Well, the doctor means smoothing it up and changing the linen and turning the mattress. What's the idea of turning the mattress? The other side's just the same. <laughs> to get the bumps out of it. What do you mean? Why, why, don't you see what a big hollow there is where you've been lying and then how the... You keep away from my bed and from me, do you hear? Keep away! Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I think I'll be running along, Dr. Christian, if you don't mind. I have some errands to do. Oh, wait a minute. I'll give you a lift. All right, but I don't want to hurry you. Oh, I'm going right along, too, anyway. All right. Just want to check up with this lady and make sure she's taken the medicine and tonic I prescribed. Uh, Doctor... I was going to ask you about that tonic. Yes? Uh, don't you think a little sherry or port wine would be better? <laughs> well, they wouldn't take the place of the liver extract, I'm afraid. Never could stand the taste of liver. Oh, you can't taste the liver in that tonic. And taste something I don't like. Tastes like, uh, like the fillings in your teeth. <laughs> That's the iron in it you taste. Oh. And iron is good for you. Then you... Won't let me have any sherry or port wine? No, of course I will. If you take the tonic, too. Huh. I'll bring you a bottle the next time I come. Oh, no, no, never mind. Wine's a luxury. Now, which do you prefer, sherry or port? <laughs> it's hard to say. I like them both. Uh-huh, well, I'll, I'll bring you a bottle of each. How's that? You mean as a, as a present? Of course. I hate to accept it from you. I'm accepting so much. No, that's all right. All these visits of yours, they, uh, they are just friendly visits, aren't they? Of course. Uh, well, I just wanted to make sure. I, I'd be glad to pay you, Doctor, if I could, but I... I understand. It's so dreadful to be poor. You stop worrying about money now, just concentrate on getting well. Yeah. I'll be to see you again tomorrow. Uh, with the wine? <laughs> with the wine. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Fenner. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry she spoke to you like that, Rachel. It wasn't oh. kind of her. 
Well, it's all right by me. I'm perfectly willing to stay away from her and from her house. Did you ever see such a dirty place in your life? Oh, poor soul. Now, listen, Dr. Christian, there's no excuse for anyone living in filth. And you're old and sick, my dear, and have nobody to do for you then. Well, she certainly found someone to do for her now. Who? You. Oh. And she's playing you for all your worth, begging for wine. Oh, the wine will do good. <laughs> You'll pay for it out of your own pocket, of course. Oh, I might prevail upon Dan McCarthy to donate it, of course. Well, he'll never get thanked for it either. You mustn't judge her too harshly. Poverty does strange things to people. And besides, she hasn't long to live. Is she in bad shape? Very. At least she's anemia. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't know. Oh, at least she doesn't suffer. At least we can just make her comfortable and bring a little light into her life. Oh, well, you are good, Dr. Christian. You make me ashamed of myself. Well, I'll do anything I can for her, of course. We all will. While waiting for the curtain to go up on the next act of our Dr. Christian drama, The Neediest Case, starring Jean Hirschholt in the role of Dr. Christian, we want you to hear what this lady has to say. The other day when the bridge club met at my house, my partner said, Look at Helen's hands. They're white and smooth looking even in this cold weather. And she does just as much housework as the rest of us. Well, I told them how I take care of chapped hands. And they were all so grateful that I'm glad of this chance to pass along a discovery to you. It's a simple thing to do. And so much less expensive than almost anything else you can use. When my hands get chapped and rough, I rub them with Vaseline jelly. It's soothing and helps lubricate the skin, you know. Then, if I'm doing housework at the time, I work Vaseline jelly well into my hands and wear a pair of old cotton gloves while I'm doing my dusting and cleaning. And they heal much more quickly. Helping to take the soreness and redness out of chapped hands is just one of the ways a 10-cent jar of Vaseline jelly can help you. For Vaseline jelly not only soothes irritated skin, but helps to supplement the natural skin oils. It forms a thin protective film that helps to keep infection out when the skin is broken. And it promotes healing. Get a jar or tube of Vaseline jelly tomorrow. We return now to the next act of The Neediest Case. As the curtain rises, we find representatives of the River's End Telephone Company installing a telephone beside Miss Ivy Fenner's bed at Dr. Christian's insistence. Tell me that screwdriver, will you, Howard? Sure thing. Cat. Huh? How much longer is it going to take you men to get that telephone installed? Oh, we'll be through in a few minutes Won't now. Won't be long now. I don't know why you have to do all your pounding right by the head of my bed. Because that's where the doctor said the phone was to be placed. Oh. So you can reach right out and call him any time you want him. I'm sick enough to need him. I'll be too sick to remember his number. Well, you just say to the operator, I want Dr. Christian, and she'll get him for you. Yeah, just like saying, give me the police, or I want to report a fire, see? Uh -huh. Got those wire cutters? Yeah, they're right by your hand there. Uh, Who thinks nonsense? Time. I've got along all my life without a telephone. Well, the doctor says he'll feel easier in his mind knowing you have one. Don't you think we oh. need a little bit more length? Yeah. Uh, reach the bed there. What's my number going to be? Cedar 365, ring 4. 365. Give me a piece of paper. I want to write it down. Well, it's printed right here on the instrument. I said I want to write it down. Okay. <laughs> Will this do? Yeah, I guess so. I can write on the back of it. Here, here's my pen. Cedar. 365, ring 4. It's a party wire, you see. Which means it'll always be busy. Oh, no, there are only three others on it. There's uh, Mrs. Osborne. She's ring one, Miss Fenner. Uh, so you're writing all this down? Uh, who else? Um, uh, the Lymans. Lymans are ring two. Yeah. And the Lees, they're ring three. And Ivy Fenner, ring four. That's right. Ivy Fenner. I wish my hand didn't shake so. Can you read my signature? Hmm? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Plain as day. Now, now you write your names down at the bottom. Our names? 
before. So if anything goes wrong with the phone, I'll know who to blame. But well, that isn't necessary, <laughs> ma'am. The company will have a record of the job. I like to keep my own record. Oh, all right. Let me have the pen. There you are. Jerry Munn. Uh, now you. Okay. Howard Scudder. One of the Scudder tribe, eh? Yes, sir. Um... Put the date down, too. All right. Friday, December... 30th, 1938. There. Uh, now give it to me. Yes, and hurry up and finish your work and get out of here. Oh, we're almost done now. I, I'm so tired. I can't hardly breathe. Hey, what's the matter? Miss Fenner. Miss Fenner. Howard, she's dying. Get that phone connected quick. Hey, here, it's done. Thank the Lord. Hello? Hello, operator. Give me Dr. Christian's office quick. Doesn't it not to hear that querulous old voice coming from the bed? Mm, let's hope she's singing for a change now. Oh, I doubt it. Hey, these blankets we gave her can be washed and used for somebody else. Sure. But the mattress isn't fit for anything. Look at it. Mm, I wanted to get her a new one, but she insisted she'd slept in this one all her life. Wouldn't be comfortable on any other. Mm. Never had it clean once, I'll bet, in all the years she had it. Mm, you'd better burn it. All right. Let's carry it out in the backyard and make a bonfire of it right now. Of course, if there's good hair in it, it could be sterilized. Oh, that's not a hair mattress. It's the cheapest kind of cotton. Well, you soon find out. There's a big grip in the middle of the taking. How can you bear to put your hand inside that filthy old thing? Well, hmm. What's the matter? Oh, we were both wrong. Hmm? It's stuffed with paper. What? Look. Oh. A big handful of... Why, Dr. Christian, it's a... It's money. Well, I'll be... Great wads of bills. Big denominations, too. Look. Good. Five hundred. Oh. Five hundred. A thousand. Oh, that's, that's the first thousand dollar bill I ever saw in my life. A hundred. Five hundred. A hundred. Uh, uh, another thousand. There's a fortune there, Doctor. Here, here. Help me count it. All right, I'll take this pile. Five hundred. Fifty. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. Well, there's four thousand five hundred dollars in my pile. Yeah, and five thousand seven hundred and fifty in mine. Yeah, that's over ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand two hundred and fifty. And to think that we almost burned it up, it, it makes me fairly weak in the knees to think of it. Mm, I'm feeling rather shaky myself. <laughs> hey, wait till Riverland hears of this. The town's neediest case, Dr. Christian's pet charity. <laughs> I had no idea. That... Oh, you're going to have the life kitted out of you. Mm, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Begging donations when all the time she had more than any of us. You know, we're going to insist on you reimbursing us. I? Mm-hmm, out of this money. But it's not mine. Of course it is. No. Well, you found it, didn't you? Well, that doesn't make it mine. But it is... Oh, it belongs to the state. What? Under some relative puts in an appearance and claims it. Oh, but that isn't fair. It's the law, my dear. When a person dies without leaving a will, and there's no heirs. The money goes automatically to the state. But in this case, if you hadn't found it, we'd have burned. Oh, that makes no difference. You mean to say you're not entitled to any of it? Uh, not a cent. Oh, I could submit a bill for professional services, I suppose. <laughs> but that wouldn't amount to much. Oh, I never heard of anything so, so unfair after all you did for her. And... Uh, I admit I... I could make good use of it. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, it would go a long way towards some hospital equipment I've been wanting. Yes. It just makes me boil when I think of her lying there, accepting everything from you, and not even thanking you for it, mewing about being so poor. Oh, and she so... might not have known about the money. Don't be silly. Why else would she have insisted on hanging on to this filthy old mattress? Why was she so afraid of having any, anyone even touch her bed? Why, of course she knew. Yeah, I, I guess she did. The old miser. Oh, well, such people are really pathological cases. You know. Oh, who could that be? Now, don't tell me that the state treasurer has heard so soon. Uh, come in. 
Hello, Doc. Oh, oh it's you, Terry. Hello, Miss Wells. <laughs> Hello. Say, we thought you might be a long-lost relative of the deceased turning up to claim your share of the estate. Oh, uh, no, I just came to take the telephone out. No. <laughs> Will I be in your way? Mm-hmm. No, no, not at all. They're just looking over things. Go right ahead. Okay. Last time I was here, it was to put the phone in. Didn't do her much good, did it? No. Mm. You know, she sure went sudden there at the end. She'd been talking to Howard and me and writing and... Writing? Yeah, putting down the names of the other folks on her party wire. There's a list here under the telephone just as she wrote it. Well. I gave her one of my report slips to write on. See? Cedar 365. Mm. I hear... What's the matter? What is it? Well, this isn't a list at all. I guess the old lady was having a little fun with you, Doctor. What? Here, yeah, read it. Cedar 365. Yeah, that was her number. I hereby give and decree everything of which I'm possessed to the only good friend I've ever had, Dr. Paul Christian. Oh, Dr. Christian. Signed, Ivy Fennel. And witnessed by Terry Munn and Howard Scotto. Well, what do you know about that? And so the curtain falls on another drama of River's End, starring Gene Herschel. Mr. Hirschholt will be out in front in a moment to take a bow and to tell you about next week's program. Meanwhile, I have a word to say about the products that make this program possible. You know, housework is hard on the hands at any time of the year. But in the winter especially, it's very, very hard. Remember to rub a little soothing Vaseline jelly on your hands at the first sign of roughness or redness. Vaseline jelly is wonderful for the skin because it supplements the natural skin oils and helps to overcome dryness. It is refined under the strictest standards and contains no acids, chemicals, or other irritants. In fact, Vaseline jelly is so pure you can eat it. Be sure to look for the familiar Vaseline trademark when you buy. It is your guarantee of absolute purity. And remember, Vaseline jelly is also the base of a number of specialty products. Vaseline carbolated jelly, Vaseline borated jelly, Vaseline camphor ice, and Vaseline lip ice. Ask your druggist about their special benefits. In our drama, The Neediest Case Tonight, you heard Miss Josephine Hull, Broadway star, in the role of the old lady, Ivy Fenner. Miss Gloria Holden, Hollywood featured player, in the role of the society girl, Rita Wells. And Frank Butler, Mary Kroger, and Mary Stewart. Now, here is our star, Gene Hirschholt, as Dr. Christian. Uh, I hear plans are on foot for the annual dinner of the State Medical Society next week in Center City, at which the great surgeon Sir Thomas Beaton is to be guest of honor. Is that right, Dr. Christian? Yes, we're all looking forward to meeting him. In fact, I'm determined to get him to look at the patient of mine, Mrs. Bentry. The story of Mrs. Bentry, in fact, is our drama for next week, and it's called The Guest of Honor. And so until next Tuesday night at the same hour, I'll say good night. Don't fail to listen to Gene Hirschholt's Dr. Christian drama next Tuesday night at this same hour. It is called The Guest of Honor. Your announcer, Andre Baruch. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.